Pixel 6 Pro. What a beast of a phone. I've had this for almost three weeks now and after spending that amount of time with it, I can honestly say without a second thought that this is the most premium phone that Google has ever made by a huge margin. But does that make it worth buying? Because after the first impressions wear off and that honeymoon phase ends, how a phone looks or feels in your hand it's just not important anymore. There are way more important things to consider, like how long does the battery last? Does the display get bright enough to see outdoors? Are the speakers any good? Does it stutter when I open a lot of apps? The Pixel 6 Pro is a stunning looking phone. I mean, at least in my opinion, but it does lose out to some other phones in some of those areas which we'll talk about later in this review. I got the 6 Pro in this sort of sunny colorway. Thank you, Google. Yellow is one of my favorite colors, and I personally love how this phone looks and feels. There's a certain finesse to it that I can't really put my finger on, but it's something that a lot of other flagship phones are missing. Maybe it's the colored aluminum side rails or the two-tone design, or even this camera bar for that matter. I know some of you guys don't like the look of this huge visor looking thing going across the back of this phone, and. For a little while after the leaks of this phone came out, I was right there with you, man. I didn't like it either. But trust me when I say that it looks a lot better in person. It's an insanely recognizable design and it's different from any other smartphone out there. I like it a lot. Like I mentioned in my first impressions video, I'm not usually the kind of guy that likes these curved waterfall displays, but for once, I think it belongs on this phone. There's some elegance to it, and I haven't had any issues with accidental touches, even without a case on the phone. Google does sell an official case for this phone, but I think it mutes the colors a little too much, and it's a little loose around the edges, so I'd probably recommend that you'd go with a third-party case for this phone. Okay, let's turn our attention to the display itself, shall we? Google's got a great one this year. It's a 6.7 inch 1440p LTPO AMOLED display that runs at a high refresh rate of 120 hertz. Lots of technical mumbo jumbo there, but basically what you need to know are three things. It's sharp, the colors are great, and it feels super smooth to use. This phone is cheaper than a lot of the other top end phones from other manufacturers, but the display is not an area where you feel like they cut corners. The display gets bright enough for outdoor viewing, and watching any kind of media on this thing is great, whether it be a movie on Netflix or your favorite YouTubers. However, there definitely are some areas where I feel like corners were cut, and you'll run into the first one pretty quickly once you start watching something. The speakers on this phone, they're just not great. Now they are stereo speakers, there's an earpiece speaker at the top and a bottom firing one, but the one at the top is quieter and it sounds a lot more tinny, which kind of throws off the stereo imaging. Fear not, there is somewhat of a solution. If you go into the accessibility settings and audio adjustment, you can change the balance of the audio to bias a little more towards the left or right. If you hold the phone sideways with the earpiece speaker on your left, drag the dial a little to the left to fix that sound imbalance. It works like a charm. The speakers still won't sound the best, but at least the balance of them won't be off anymore. The second area where I feel like they cut corners a little is in the fingerprint reader. Now Google put one in the glass this year, and even though this is a little bit neater from a design standpoint, they opted not to go with the more expensive ultrasonic fingerprint reader found in phones like the S21 Ultra. Most of the time it's fine. It's not the fastest to unlock the phone, but it works most of the time. Now, there have been more than one instance that the phone just flat out refused to read my thumb though, and I'd be lying to you if I said it isn't frustrating, because it can be. It's one of my biggest gripes with this phone. On the plus side, at least when it doesn't recognize your thumb, you get a nice solid pulse of haptic feedback, because the vibration motors in this phone are A+. It's a minor thing, but it's one of those things that you really do notice that makes the phone just feel a little bit more premium. All right, now for more important stuff. In terms of how the 6 Pro feels to use every day, I've got some great news and I've got some meh news. First of all, I think Google has made some great changes to Android 12, which comes preloaded onto this phone. Their new Material U interface matches very well with the design of the phone, and there are some awesome ways to customize it. For example, these new widgets that Google designed all take their color from the wallpaper so that they match nicely. I have noticed that some of them match a little too closely, to the point where it hampers a accessibility a little, but it's good for the most part. Even the drop down menu draws its color from your wallpaper and has bigger rectangular buttons. It's a solid new aesthetic that lends itself to 
plenty more customization across the board, which I'm sure a lot of you will love. But there are some minor inconsistencies here and there that again are a cause for some frustration, like the fact that Google continues to slap their search bar and at a glance widgets on the home screen and then they refuse to let you move it, let alone remove it. Sure, they can be helpful, I guess, but this is Android, man. We want full control over how we customize our phones. Anyway, after just a few days of using the Pixel Launcher, I decided to switch to Nova Launcher and then customize that exactly how I wanted to. So not a big deal, I guess. But some things just can't be fixed by switching launchers, like how jumpy and inconsistent the auto brightness is. Most phones will slowly ramp the brightness up and down to conceal the transition and to make it less distracting. But Google's method is very bold and in your face. If you go from a light area to a dark area, the phone jumps from a bright screen to a dark one quickly and without much of a transition. It sounds fine in theory, but I find it just jumps around a lot, even if I'm not moving around much, and it's very distracting. Now, the reason I'm harping on every little thing that bugs me about this phone is because there's a lot of things that the 6 Pro does extremely well, and I'm about to gush about them for a long time. I didn't want you guys thinking I was just some Google fanboy, so I got most of my grievances out early so that we could really talk about the thing that I love without being interrupted. Let's start with Google Tensor. If you guys didn't know, Google created their own custom SOC or system on a chip for this phone. They gave up on Snapdragon processors and in the words of Thanos himself said, Fine, I'll do it myself. In synthetic benchmarks, it performs very close to the Snapdragon 888, which is the fastest chip that's currently available for Android. That kind of benchmark is very hard to translate into real world usage, but honestly, I haven't had any issues with the performance on the 6 Pro whatsoever. It has handled everything I threw at it without so much as a complaint. No noticeable frame drops or stuttering, and multitasking is no problem at all. Given that they've paired this phone with 12 gigs of RAM, that's not a huge surprise. Even with gaming, it feels like a top-end Snapdragon phone. Naturally, it does get a little warm after playing with it for a bit, but so does every other phone save for a few niche phones that were designed with mobile gaming in mind. But I was a lot more curious about how the new Tensor chip would handle battery life rather than gaming or multitasking, because that has historically been a bit of a weak point with flagship phones made by Google. For me personally, the battery life of the 6 Pro has been excellent. Now, I know some other reviewers have had different experiences with that, which I was actually really surprised to hear about, but I can only speak to my own personal experience with the phone. And for me, the battery life has been up there with the best of phones. I can easily get through my full day with at least 25 or 30% of my battery left with how I use this phone. I'm not what some would call or consider a power user, but I do use my phone a lot for social media, taking photos, making phone calls, checking emails, and a bunch of other stuff. So I get plenty hours of screen on time a day. The 6 Pro has a huge 5,000 milliamp hour battery plus an LTPO AMOLED display that's able to throttle its refresh rate to save battery life, so I'm not too shocked that the battery life has been good for me. Google has also upped its wired charging speed from last year to 30 watts of fast charging, giving you about 50% of battery in about half an hour. Not quite the crazy 65 watt fast charging of the OnePlus 9 Pro, but still decent. Okay, camera time. Photography is something that pixels have been renowned for for a long time, and the 6 Pro doesn't disappoint. Google finally moved away from their old camera system into some new camera hardware, and the result is a noticeable improvement across the board. For one, photos coming from the new 50 megapixel wide angle camera are sharper and more detailed. Of course, you're getting that signature pixel contrast across the frame, and as usual, I really like how Google interprets the colors in most photos. Architecture and vehicles are still my favorite things to shoot with a Pixel and they almost always end up looking fantastic. The new 48 4X telephoto is great too, and while it's not quite the crazy 10X optical zoom of the S21 Ultra's periscoping telephoto camera, it's still very useful and has plenty of sharpness in it. You could always crop into that large sensor for an even closer shot, but it's still not quite as good as an uncropped shot with a longer focal length. I'm really not much of a selfie taking person, but here's a few photos I took with the front facing camera. If there's any weak point in the 6 Pro's photographic capabilities, I'd have to say it's with the ultra wide camera. It's a 12 megapixel sensor, so it's not quite as pixel dense, but also more disappointingly, it's not really ultra wide. 
At 0.7 times, it's only a little bit wider than the standard wide-angle camera, and it doesn't really capture that wow factor that ultra-wide lenses usually have. But as usual, the Pixel's magic sauce lies in the software capabilities, not hardware. Google has a slew of new features on this phone, ranging from kinda cool but a little gimmicky to very cool and actually very useful. Action pan and long exposure are new, and they're basically opposites of each other. Action pan lets you take a picture of a moving object and it blurs the background to make it look like it's moving fast. Long exposure makes objects look blurred while the background stays normal. I was more interested in the face unblur and magic eraser features though. With face unblur, if you have a person that's moving around a lot, Google will take secondary pictures with the ultra wide at a very high shutter speed and then stitch those two photos together so that you get some realistic natural motion blur but the face stays sharp and unblurred pretty cool and useful. Magic Eraser is even cooler in my opinion. If you take a picture and it has something in it that you didn't want there, like uh, some photo bombers or uh, an ugly trash can, you could just hit the Magic Eraser and the phone will auto-magically remove them with some content-aware fill. It's not perfect, but it does a darn good job with most things. Google also made a big deal with how improved their cameras were for video this year, but uh, while I'm sure the quality of the video has improved from their phones in the past, it still doesn't quite hold a candle to something like the iPhone 13 that is a little inferior when it comes to photography, but is vastly superior when it comes to video. So, Pixel 6 Pro, how much does it cost and should you buy one? The 6 Pro actually undercuts most flagship phones on the market right now and sits pretty at 900 bucks. It's not cheap, don't get me wrong, but it's certainly not the thousand bucks of the iPhone 13 Pro or the 1200 bucks that the S21 Ultra currently costs. I definitely have some minor annoyances with the Pixel 6 Pro, but for the overall package and the fact that it's cheaper than a lot of other flagships, yeah, I think it's a great phone. If it fits your needs, go for it. Hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching, and as always, have a great day.